talk to me about you know what you remember not necessarily about your experience growing up but what you remember in general about los angeles and the the change that it went through when 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 gangs and crack invaded this, this, this our, our town you know what man uh, honestly I, I was like one of those we, weird kids i guess um i was very dennis the menacey but you know not in a mean way i just always got into stuff <clears throat> but i was always in my own world just like you know when other kids were were like when they finally got into girls you know i i, I was like still playing marbles i loved marbles uh -huh. um you know when when, when break dancing when hip-hop came around um you know i didn't even uh i didn't really like it man i mean i remember watching a, a show called that's incredible <clears throat> and i i believe it was the new york city breakers that were on there and I, I thought it was the dumbest thing i ever saw man when i saw them break dancing and spinning on their heads and stuff and of course man you know about a month later i'm in my front yard with some cardboard practicing backspin <laughs> um and that got me into it a little bit and then you know the the great thing about the culture was just the fact that uh there was so many elements to it you know you had you had the the, the dancing you had the graffiti you had the dd you had the mc and so you can actually go and find what you were good at I wasn't great at breaking, but I wasn't horrible. It was just, you know, I could do it. Graffiti, same thing. Um, uh, but when I heard beatboxing, that just, that took me to a whole other level, man. But, you know, but to get back to the original question, it was more or less, I, I just, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I knew where I was living at the time. I saw the gangs. I saw the violence. But, but, but I almost, like, I ignored it because it didn't really... It wasn't something that I gravitated towards, and, and, and you know, it's like I'm busy playing marbles. I'm busy playing football in the streets. I'm not really focused on the gangs that are around me and the dangers that existed at that time in my neighborhood, anyway. Because um, there was definitely some violence there. It's just, you know, I kind of just worried more about, you know, how am I going to get a pocket full of marbles to school the next day? <laughs> that, that, that was my kind of worries, you know. Uh, so yeah, so it just, you know, thank God though, thank God that I wasn't the kind of kid attracted to that that lifestyle you know to me i just you know, to this day man i'm still almost like that you know where i'm just i'm just in my own world yeah. man you can't ask me what's going on right now because i i'm just busy working and enjoying my family and my grandkids and music and just you know i'm like everyone's going to the left and i'm going to the right and when everybody's going to the right i'm going to the left it's just <laughs> that's how i've always been sounds like me homeboy sounds like me <laughs> what made you what made you be like okay beatboxing is the shit like who did you see somebody did you see like you know buffy from the fat boys like who like was the one that was like all right I, I'm, I'm digging this shit well you know it, it, it just started with buff i mean now, now although from R. what R. i P. heard you know D dougie dougie fresh came out first like dougie okay. fresh was first on the scene um but we were exposed to, to the fat boys before i was actually exposed to dougie um so when i don't know what really attracted me to it man it just you know, to I guess maybe realizing that this guy was doing drums with his mouth, maybe that's what it was. And then I just started kind of playing with the same thing he was doing and learning that. And you know, my father, God bless him, man, he just uh, although although it annoyed him because he didn't know what the hell I was doing. And you know, and 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 I, and I hope this don't come out wrong, but you know, and in Spanish it sounds way more funnier. Uh -huh. But I remember practicing in the back seat of my of, of my dad's car. We were coming back from a store called Zodi's, and oh, wow, before I'm sitting there, <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there, you know, trying to copy the copy buff, and you, you know, gotta say it in Spanish buff. though. You gotta say it in Spanish. Yeah. You can't say it in English because everybody okay. is, is Hispanic that listens to my show. So go for it. <laughs> okay, all right, that's that's better. So I'm sitting in the back seat, you know, and I'm. <laughs> I mean, I must have been going on for 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 four or five minutes, and you know, <laughs> that that sounds like an eternity, man, just to listen to the same thing over and over again. I'm trying to learn it, and he was like, "Ya para, para eso se enfermo." And then you know, for and my then, white and, friends, uh, huh? For my white oh, yeah. friends, <laughs> he just that pretty much means you know, it, this is the way it translates. It's uh -huh. not. I mean, when it says when he said stop, you you sound sick. <laughs> it, it's more like saying stop, you sound retarded. Uh -huh. That's what he was saying. <laughs> and, and and so you know, to this day, it cracks me up when I think about it because I remember his tone. But the thing with my dad, man, is even though he he may have told me cut it out, you know, he never ever. During my time when I started t till today, he never ever told me I was never going to make it. He never said any of that, man. He just let me be me. He just pretty much said, go do that outside. I don't want to hear it. That, you know what I mean? That's dope. Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, but but that that's that got me started with beatboxing. And then uh, when I got a little bit better at it, <clears throat> I came, uh, I heard Dougie Fresh. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, how the hell did he do those click things with his mouth? And once I figured it out, 
I, that's all I practiced on was the clicks, man. And I had them so good uh, that I met this other beatboxer. His name is Shasha. And this is the dude that I credit my skill level, the, you know, to. Because I always competed against him. He was, to me, he was probably the best beatboxer I've ever heard to this day. Um, he was just a natural. I mean, you he could hear a song once and duplicate it and he would be so damn close. Um, so anyway, when I ran into him in high school... Uh, he was out here from New York. I started beatboxing. I did some clicks. And he was like, yo, you got some clicks real good. He was like, I'm going to call you Click Master. And I go, okay, okay. So I ran with that name for a little while. Um, but he actually gave me that name. And that's kind of where my name came from is because I had the clicks. Probably just as good as Dougie Fresh at that time, man. Nice, nice. We're going to bounce around a little bit because I'm really interested in this whole beatbox thing. Um, we'll All right. Go, we'll, let's fast forward a little bit to Delinquent Habits. How did you end up mm -hmm. hooking, with them, hooking up with them? <clears throat> uh, you know what? I, I never really did. Uh, the only the only thing that I got close to was probably <clears throat> at the time that my record was out. You know, they they knew who I was because I was getting some spins at Power One Hundred Six, mm -hmm. and um, and so so they knew who I was. And the label that I was kind of signed to uh, knew the label owner of the label that they were on, <clears throat> and they were looking for remixes for um, Lower East Side. And at that time, I had did a, a remix for the Mexicans, Burning Hot. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, my name was kind of floating around a little bit, man. You know, my style was still a little bit different than everybody else's. But uh, the guy was looking for a remix for uh, Lower East Side. I, I submitted a, a remix. They liked it. They used it. Uh, then I ran into them at a few shows that we had around that same time. And, uh, you know, I got to know Ives. Ives was probably the main one that I, that I spoke to a little bit uh, more than anyone else. And, and we would run into each other here and there, but it really wasn't like... Like, yeah, man, we, you know, we, we've known each other for years. And it was more, of, we ran into each other during that time period. We were cool. We knew who each other was. And that's probably as far as it went, you know. Mm. Ex <laughs> explain to everybody how the whole remix thing worked back then. Because remixes aren't really as big as, you know, they, they or, or it's, the remixes are different now. Now there's different people on it. Back then it was a different beat, but pretty much the same lyrics. Yeah. Just a different beat. But how do you get approached to do someone's remix? How did that whole process go down? Well, you know, the, the thing was that they heard the remix that did the Burning Hot. And, you know, they had asked my label owner who did it, and he told them I did it. And then he, they said, I have them do one for me. And so I, I did one, and they accepted it. But the, the, the basic thing is, <clears throat> what, this is what I try to do. Because I'm trying to get my name out there and get work and get paid for this mm -hmm. stuff. And so I would just do remixes on anybody, whoever I could find an acapella version on a record, uh, whether it was uh, Funk Dubious, um anybody man if i could find a vinyl with the acapella on it i was trying to do a remix i did one for a, a spec remix for um volume 10 the uh, uh pistol grip pump, grip pump <laughs> on my left at all yep. times I, I did something on that i did um one on uh i did say a second one for delinquent habits i didn't submit it i just did it to show that i could do something a, a new style or whatnot and and so basically you just take an acapella and you just listen to the vibe and you try to create a beat around that vibe um, and, you know, and, and you hopefully match the tempo correctly. And since we had the vinyl, we could control the speed of the vinyl when we played it. So I would just place it and, and hopefully it would link up. And if it, if I had to redo it over in terms of trying to sync the acapella to my track, it just took a while, but I did it. I mean, I, dude, I, I come from the days of making beats on double cassette decks. Yes. And, and this Explain is where. to these young you know, kids who, it's all man. digital now, homie. <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny. So it's jealous, funny. Dog. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because you know, the, and and you know, they I can't get mad at them because they they don't know. It, it, it is what it is. You know, th those who are born during a certain time period experience certain things, and then the next generation doesn't experience those certain yeah. things, and so they all they know is what they know. And so, but when, when I first started to make beats, man, I, I didn't have any mach machines, so we had a double cassette player where one side could record and play, and the other side would just play. And you can record from one cassette to the next cassette. So I would find a beat or something that I would like, an old song or whatever. And I would find a little piece. So if the piece, let's say that, that during the whole song they're singing and, and whatnot, but then at one part there's like a... <clears throat> so crazy. And it, it How back you into find something that? Else. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So then, so then I, would, I would play that piece and then record... On the other deck, that little piece, and then pause it on beat as best possible. Wow. Then rewind the the deck that plays, and then play it, and then hopefully, when that part comes on, I, I undo the pause so I can record the piece again. So you, it would take like an hour for like a, a two yep. three minute track. Isn't that crazy? You know? Oh my god! 
Yeah. Jay I mean, Lowe. imagine you, you take that tape and you're so proud and you go do a show on that tape, which I'm, you know. Pops. It's, <laughs> ah. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, but that, that's dude. the days we're for, man. I mean, it definitely helped with our patience, man. Cause, yeah. You know, not today, you know, we get upset if if we edit something wrong that we know we could fix within minutes. And back then, you know, it's just... It took forever. You, could, you, you had to roll with what you had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Such a good time. Yeah. Such a good time. Uh, yeah. So was that how the process happened when you ended up beatboxing for J5 and, and Styles of Beyond? Uh, Styles of Beyond... Well, I'll go with J5 first because I met them first. <clears throat> now, I met Jurassic 5 before they were Jurassic 5. We, we met at The Good Life. And at nice. that time... Classic. I was just trying to get, yeah, I was just trying to work with anybody who could let me work with them. And, you know, of course, everybody floats to the people who are more popular. So <clears throat> there's your freestyle fellowships. There's your, your L.A. Cool, your rifle man. Everybody who was popular at the Good Life at that time, I was trying to work with, man. And it just seemed like nobody uh, paid attention to me. May, I can't say that it was because I wasn't black. I can't. I don't know what the heck it was. I just know that people had their clicks that they rolled with. And it, it's it's just like nobody would let me hang you know and maybe it could be me too maybe i didn't assert myself you know man i'm not from the street like that man people think that just because i'm a latin kid and you know now yeah i grew up in lennox but like i said i wasn't into that stuff yeah so you know i i'm i'm not street my, my wife as a matter of fact she's half white half mexican but she looks white <laughs> and you would never think that she had any hard life experiences but man she's more ghetto than <laughs> <laughs> My wife is way more street than I would ever be, man. You know, um, but yeah. So, so when I met the 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 guys from from J Five, uh, Akil and and Soup were it was them and then Medusa. Those were the only yeah. two people who came to record at my house when I bought my little eight track recorder. And actually, I was at the Good Life passing out flyers <clears throat> as much as I could. Man, it was like six bucks an hour studio time. I just wanted to get the work in, the experience. I wanted to work with different people. And nobody called me uh, except for J5 and then Medusa after I had worked with J5 for a little bit. Um, and that's how we met, man. And so I'm, I'm closest with Akil out of all of them. Um, we still talk to this day. And actually, we have a project we're working on uh, oh, at wow. the moment as well. Ooh, um, and then Styles of Beyond, still Styles of Beyond, I knew Takbir's older brother. Um, I met him during my day when I was looking for beats for, for my album. And um, he was referred to me through some uh, person I knew at, at a label. <clears throat> and then I had met him. And I met Todd Beer way before he started rhyming. Um, he just was just a, a kid wearing, you know, Chicago Bulls basketball jerseys. And just, he really wasn't even rhyming. And then uh, when when years later came around and they, they got their, their deal and they were going to work on their album, uh, it was pretty much done. And Bilal, who's Todd Beer's older brother, hit me up and said, yo, I need a, I need a beatbox Thing on this album and so i just i sent him a, a little piece for just an interlude and they ended up using it and that and, and in a piece of that beatbox actually got sampled by some of ll cool j's producers for cool j's the goat album and th then you know i i got i got paid off of that man because i owned all the publishing for that so but that it's, it's like a hidden track on ll cool j's the goat album it's a song that he did i can't remember the name of the song but it features a singer named case um, but it's just funny how things float around like that, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Couple th something that I found crazy, I had to dig for this. Uh, not really. I went to Wikipedia to find this. And you tell me if it's <laughs> true or not because I've, I've done hundreds of shows over the years and I've been called out probably seven, eight times on shit that I got from Wikipedia where they're like, no, dog, that ain't true. <laughs> so you tell me <laughs> you tell me if this is true or not. But did you did you do the overdubs in, in, one, in one of my favorite hip-hop movies of all time? Eight Mile, yeah, yeah, that oh, was me. that's dope. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, what part? And so actually, what part are we talking? When they're freestyling in the uh, in the parking lot? In the, in the parking lot, oh, yeah. There's nice. a you know that's when dope. they asked the guy to do a beat and, yeah. and the guy is in the background with his mouth covered and yeah, it was it wasn't him, it was me. That's dope. How'd you get <clears throat> you know? approached for that? Um, you know, it's crazy, man. Throughout most of my career, whenever I've done anything in film or radio, anything, man, it's it's always come to my doorstep. I never went looking for it, and, and any time that I did go looking for work, I never got work. All the stuff that I've done has, has just been like somebody just yeah. somebody referred me to something, yeah. you know. Um, so somebody at the time was looking for a beatboxer in LA, and um, I want to say, I want to say it may have come through Big Boy, man. <clears throat> you know, um, for, you know, me and Big Boy were homies when Big I worked Boy at Power Big Boy's neighborhood. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Big Boy's neighborhood, and um, you know, 
I'm not, I'm not totally sure. All I know is that I got a call. I'm out in my front yard fixing my gate, and I, I'm all dirty, man, because I had to resubmit a bunch of stuff. And I get a call. They need a beatboxer for this overdub on Eight Mile, and they go, "Can you come audition?" So I go, "Okay," and I went to go audition, and I got the part. And then, you know, I went in one day to record, and it took me, man, less than twenty minutes, man. Oh, nice. You know, Easy and check. then they messed up. Yeah, somebody somebody messed up on the on the sync. Um, Thinking into the movie properly, just was it was it was done, and then they were trying to do something, and then they messed it up. So I had to go back again <clears throat> to redo it, but then they didn't want to pay me, oh, you yeah. know. And I'm like, nah, you know. And I had to get people from the union involved, and like, no, nah, I, I, they asked me to come in on a Sunday, and and then um, Eminem <clears throat> is there the second time I get there, and and I'm only speculating, bro, right? But but I, as a fan of of documentaries, I always like the little. Backstory things that you know may have happened or even may not have happened, but those, too, those interesting little things that you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so Eminem was there, <clears throat> and I'm there with my younger son, and then you know, of course, I, like I said, I had to talk to uh, one of the guys who represented uh, uh, SAG, uh, which is the Screen Actors Guild, the mm-hmm. union, and and let them know, no, they don't want to pay me, blah blah. So we go through all that stuff, and finally they booked me to go back in there, and this time Eminem's in there. So I go in there, and I'm redoing the beatbox and. He's watching me. So I, 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 you know, one, two takes and I was done. Mm-hmm. He was like, hmm, that sounds good. But, but like this part right here where I say mustard or whatever he's saying. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's, it's like slightly off, like the snare ain't right there. I'm like, okay, let's do it again. <clears throat> so I do it again. I, almost there, man. But now you're like a slight bit behind. All right, cool. Let's do it again. <laughs> I do it again. And then he's like. Man, and then I was like, I like, bro. I go, you know more than anything else as far as authenticity. This is what I'm telling him. As far as the authenticity of it, man. I go, you know that freestyle in the parking lot, man. Everything ain't gonna be perfectly on sync. I go, this. I said, this is this, this close, man. I can't. I don't hear what you're hearing. <laughs> I go, but it's cool. I go. I, I said, I'll do it again. So then I did it again, and he was like, man, can you just do it one more time? Because you're just like it's the hair and. And then at this time, I'm going, okay, he's being, I don't know if I can curse, but yeah, you, I'm you thinking can 100% he did. curse. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking he's, you know, in my head, I'm going, oh, he's just being an asshole. You know, he he he, he probably heard that, that you know, I, I breezed through the session and he just wanted to make sure that I, you know, I put my work in for that money. Because at that time, too, on a Sunday, I think it was double pay, so I had to get paid double mm-hmm. to go back in. So I'm just thinking he's, he's just probably just trying to make a point. <clears throat> yeah, and so whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> And so I did it another couple of times, and he still wasn't 100% happy. Um, he goes, well, it's, it's cool, man. We'll just leave it like that, you know. And I, I'm sitting there going like, bro, like, really? I'm like, okay, whatever, <laughs> man, you know. And, and, and so that was my uh, experience dealing with people on that level, yeah. you know, because you know, he, he was his Eminem. What are you going to do? Say right. no. Right, you know? exactly. I mean, you, you can. <clears throat> you can. But then I also heard from other people that because – I was supposedly supposedly an asshole for charging for a second session. Oh, that they were going to make sure I didn't get in any other films to do anything else. Oh, really? Fucking but little did they know, it. man. I went, yeah, and but little did they know that I wasn't tripping off that because I I was I was fixing my gate in the front yard. They called me. I didn't call them. Mm-hmm. It was just you know that fell from the sky like shit. That was an easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, and it was it was man. You know and. And I've had other situations like that. But yeah, that, that's how the Eminem thing happened. Yeah, one of my guilty pleasures, can lie. I've seen this movie 48 times probably. You ended up on the cutting room floor of Malibu's Most Wanted. Yeah, man. That's, that. <laughs> Tell me. Dude, you know what? <clears throat> and I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to share this because I want people to understand that you never know how things are going to come about. You know, you could have one thing in your mind planned on how you're going to become successful. And sometimes... The weirdest shit will happen, and you could be pissed about whatever situation, but then something will come out of that situation, okay? So, <clears throat> at this time, before I got in- involved with that, that film, I was doing stuff for Nike. And I was kind of sp- not really sponsored like, in terms of, like, signing contracts, and they're going to pay me a yearly thing. It was more like they were just giving me free shoes, you know? Okay. <clears throat> Which was fine, because I have a family, so th- they were getting free shoes, shit. too. So. So they, they had this thing called Battlegrounds, and it was like this one-on-one basketball tournament of some of the best ballers in from across the states, man. I mean, even Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's son was involved as far as being a, uh, one of the competitors and whatnot. Hmm. So <clears throat> what they wanted to do was they wanted to do a, a thing where 
it says it was called Battlegrounds. They wanted me to do a, a beatbox thing, and they wanted me to battle <clears throat> the the MC of the show, right? And there was two people hosting. There was John Sally who played for the Bulls, and and he's you know he, he people who follow basketball a lot know who he is. But of course. I didn't know who the heck he was because I didn't really follow basketball, you know. And I know Jordan, but I didn't know John Sally, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, so I'm there, and the whole thing was supposed to be the the regular MC for that night was gonna. Ask somebody to battle rap. I was going to come up there, do, you know, eight lines or something. He was going to do eight lines. And then uh, I was supposed to do a beatbox thing. And then that, that was going to be that, like, I win the battle, you know. They want to keep that theme. <clears throat> so I do my rhyme. And, he, and then this guy does his rhyme. And the crowd really, really wasn't feeling my rhyme, which I didn't care because I was going to beatbox anyway. So who cares? But John Sally didn't know that I was supposed to beatbox. Mm. So... The crowd goes with the MC as far as winning that battle. And I'm like, yo, man, I go, listen, dude, I go, I'm supposed to beatbox. And so John Talley goes, okay, y'all, Click is supposed to beatbox. He wants to show you how to beat, you know. And so he introduced me like that to beatbox, and that oh, pissed me wow. off. Are you serious? So I'm like, you, 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 now, now you threw me in there in a negative sense. You didn't even go, look, you know, you got something else you want to do? Yeah, yeah, I do it. And, you know, he didn't do that. He was like... Okay, y'all, uh, Click's gonna, Click wants to beatbox. You know what I'm saying? And this this is not like a crowd of like 20 people, man. <clears throat> I mean, these are Nike executives are there. I mean, a ton of people. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's, they had this, they set up a, a custom basketball court at this mansion. It was just, it was huge. And um, so I'm pissed. I'm pissed, man. But I beatbox anyway, and the crowd goes nuts for it. And so I leave, but I'm pissed because I feel like, like, dude, you just, you just made me look Sunday, stupid. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe. You know, maybe they, they, they're going to forget about it, but you diss me. You know, that's, you know, I'm pissed. Now, before, <clears throat> when I walked into the event, they had these Nike Battleground basketballs for the tournament. And I wanted one, but they wouldn't let me have one. They said, no, no, it's for the tournament. I'm like, okay, whatever. But after I got dissed, I said, fuck, I'm taking two of these. <laughs> so I snatched, I snatched two of the basketballs, and I'm walking away. And as I'm, as I'm almost out the gate, this lady grabbed me from the jacket, from the back of my jacket. She's like, excuse me, hey, hold on, hold on. She goes, you were awesome. And I go, oh, thanks. And I'm still pissed, bro. I'm mm-hmm. still pissed. So I go, thank you. I appreciate that. It's like, I have a friend doing a film. I think he'd be great in it. You know, here's my card. Call them. Tell them that I said this. And then they're going to give you an audition date. And I'm like, okay, okay. And, but I, I, I was almost didn't pay it no mind, dude. <clears throat> so I leave. And then I call. And then I go to the audition. And uh, it ends up being Malibu's Most Wanted. And so I do my beatbox mm-hmm. thing. And, and, uh, and then I get a call like that same day that, that Jamie Kennedy saw the reel and that he loved it. He wanted me to be, me be a part of it. <clears throat> so the reason it got cut out of the movie, if you look at the deleted scene and you see what I did, and then you watch the movie, mm-hmm. you can tell it doesn't match. Mm-hmm. It's like, it, it was almost like what I did was too authentic for what they were trying to pull off. They, mm-hmm. they, they were trying to be funny with hip hop and rap. And, 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 you know, and in the two, what I didn't like about my, my part is that, I could not do what I did best, which is be beatboxing, imitating songs, because they need to have to pay clearance money. They have to pay publishing for mm-hmm. any beatbox that I imitated. So I had to like make up stuff, and I wasn't ready. I was not prepared to do that. So even when I watched that little deleted scene, man, I'm always like, oh, oh I wish I would have did something else, or <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but that that's how I got Malibu's Most Wanted, man. From yeah. from being this to being, and and the crazy thing is, I had to be a member of SAG because I had already been a part of certain films Mm -hmm. and so i couldn't do malibu's most wanted until i became a member of sag and sag was going to run me 1200 bucks and it in for malibu's most wanted the piece i did was going to pay me about 1200 bucks um and jamie kennedy man jamie kennedy paid my sag dues and got me into sag and he paid me the my rate for that day dude that's (laughs) dope and little stories like that thank you for saying that man because people don't know that these dudes who are making you know the good chunk of money are are, are doing mm-hmm. little things like that that's that's dope dog he paid 1200 bucks yeah. for your fucking sad card that's pretty much yeah. unheard of and and there's yeah. probably a lot of people out there that that do things like that and don't even yeah. don't even brag about it on facebook oh i just paid off clicks well you know yeah. nowadays you do something nice for somebody they post you and tag you and you know yeah. it's like yeah. come on dude stop it but yeah dude that's because i was gonna do it dude i was literally i was literally gonna do it and just because i knew i was gonna be involved with more films mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I said, dude, if you could just just pay my sag, dude, don't even just whatever money is going to be due for me for the for this beatbox piece, just use that to pay 
the, my my dues, and 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 he just paid both. That's dope. Man. And that that's mad respect, man. That's that's that definitely that's not a that's not something that always happens. You know? Yeah, yeah. And how ironic is it that they had a a scene from Eight Mile in that movie, and you had right just did Eight Mile. <laughs> Life is interesting, yeah. homeboy. Man, it's been a pleasure, dude. I would love to have you on sometime in 2020 and and do a part two, man. Yeah, man. And you know, and just to put it out there, you know. Um, my, my, my son is an MC, and he's oh, been on stage with me since he was three years old. And so he's he goes by text to Super Latin, and his music's on, online on YouTube. Where can we find all him? That kind of stuff. And I'll actually play yeah, you, if he has. I'll play a video. Uh, this is this is pre-recorded, so I'll okay. I'll play a video after. So tell me what song uh, you want me to play. And yeah, the the, the, the most current song he's got out is a song called West West. It's West called W E S S. Yeah, W E S S W E S S. Yeah, West West. And um, I produced a track. Um, and he's got a, he's got a few more of the videos online, but that's the more current one. Um, but he's also going to be releasing a song every two weeks next year, like for the whole entire year, a, a song every two weeks. Um, he's definitely nice with it, man. Um, he's, you know, we're, we're trying to create a legacy brand. You know, that's why he goes by Tech with Super Latin because people back from my day remember him being on stage with me, probably all the way till he was from three to third uh, to sixteen years old. <clears throat> and so to see him come around now. And you know, it's, it's, we got to create this legacy brand, man. So yeah. he goes by Tech with Super Latin, and Smart. and again, he's you know, we, we I told him, I said, listen, I, I love you, and I, I'm glad you wanna you wanna rhyme and be this MC, but you know, I said you can't you can't use the Super Latin name if you ain't that good. I go, I love you, but you can't. <laughs> and so he worked on some projects, and and I heard something special, man. And um, I mean, there's just so much he's doing now that I'm just I'm amazed at how he writes, and he's actually more. MC minded than I am because you know I didn't like BDP at the beginning. I hear I hear MCs with, with a different type of ear, you know, and then he hears them more as an MC to MC. I hear more uh, will Very the people cool. like it? You know, does it have a good? Yeah, does it have a good? Mm -hmm. Can, can he spit? Are his lines good? Because me, man, I'm not me into too. like the stuff that I have to think too hard mm -hmm. to understand. I want to just I just want to get it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and but he's he's. He's definitely got something, man. He he went on tour with Akila J Five a couple years back, and and he's actually going to be also part of the project I'm doing with Akil. So look out for that next year. We we're starting a a, a project under the name the Boogie Trons, and it's, it's me, Akil, and my homeboy D Strong and my son Tech. Um, back in my day, the, uh, because Akil and D were on uh, one song on each of my albums, and my label guy always told me that we sounded great together, that we should do a crew. But then I killed was with J5 and there was no time. And then me and my homeboy D, although we were homies, he was on a whole other page and I didn't want to deal with the stuff he was bringing to the table at that time. Um, but we decided, let's just let's do something. So we got a, a few joints down, man. And I'm thinking, it's some underground stuff, though. It's, it's not anything current, anything kind of newish, trappish. Nah, it's some classic hip-hop stuff, but just, you know... With a little bit of, of a flair on it, man. So That's dope. can't wait to show you guys that. Yeah, That's yeah. Really dope. Keep us posted. I'll definitely stay in touch, and I'll make sure I pump your sons, a couple of your sons' videos up on this particular cool. show when I end up posting it, and I'll stay close in Got touch you. with you, man. It's been a pleasure, dude. Thank you, man. Same here, man. You have a great night, you bro. You too, man. Talk to you soon, dude. Peace. All right, peace. Peace.